Hi, I'm NipahFX, but you can call me Nikolai, and I got really good news. It's not yet April 2022, and yet this is going to be you, me, and Java Generics Part 3 Wildcards. Wildcards are mildly confusing, but integral part to writing generic code in Java. In the coming 10 minutes or so, I'll do my best to explain them to you. Or rather, I already tried to do my best, as what comes next is an edited portion of a live stream I did about generics in April 2022. By the way, I stream every Tuesday and some Sundays and would love to see you and all your thoughts or questions on Java there, link in the description. So after part 1 covered the basics and part 2 went into bounded type parameters, this part goes into wildcards. You don't need to have watched the other two parts to understand this one, but it might help. I particularly recommend the first minute or so of part 2, where I click clickly, where I quickly explain why the node class quickly explain why the node what? Where I quickly explain why the node class is all about. <laughs> Where I quickly explain what the node class is all about, and you'll be seeing that. Fuck. Where I quickly explain what the node class is all about, that you'll be seeing here. With that out of the way, over to you, more athletic and considerably younger looking Nikolai from the past. So let's say we have these methods here. And these methods, uh, this one is, for example, says, I want to compute the sum of a subtree. Give me a. Um, a node of number and which is the root of a tree and then I will just you know take go down the entire tree and compute turn all the numbers into a double value you know which could be lossy so that's not always uh, re recommended but you know in this case I want to do that so uh, compute the double value of each uh, content and then add them up into the result and the idea behind this is well look any number has a double value, so I should be able to do this with a node of integer or node of double or node of float. All of these should work, right? But if I go back here to this node of uh, this no this uh, sorry tree this tree of integers that I have, then it doesn't actually work. So um, let's is, is that static? Yes, it's static. So we're gonna do white cards, and then we're gonna say sum of subtree, and we're gonna pass in the max node. And the compiler just says, I don't want to do that. Because you provided a node of integer, but I required a node of number. And those are not the same. And your initial thought might be, well, that's unnecessarily picky. Come on, a node of integer, surely that can be a node of number. The idea is basically that integer extends number. Oh. Thus, thus, node of integer extends node of number. That's kind of what how the logic uh, logic goes. But this is does not work in general because um, the nodes have a get content and a set content method, right? So let's say we have a node of integer. That means you can get and when you get on it, you're guaranteed to, to get an integer. And when you set, you're forced to provide an integer or more specific, which doesn't exist in that case. Now, let's say um, a node of number. So let's say node of integer or node of number. Let's say that should, that should work, right? Then that would mean I could take my integer node call set content on it with something that's a number and that number could actually be a double because if you want to have a, if you have a note of number you can say set content with a double that makes sense right a double is some kind of number so you can set a double as the content of a number note but you should never be able to set a double as the content of an integer note but if you treat a note of integer as a node of or as a node of number, and that means you can set any kind of number on an integer node, and you don't want that, and that's the reason why this, basically this this logical implication here does not hold. That's why that something extends something else does not mean that one node extends the, that one generic type of that extends the other one. It's the same thing with list, right? Uh, if you have a list of user. That's not uh, that's not the same as a list of person because you know a list of user should not contain whatever engineers. 
but if a list of user would also be a list of person, then you could probably add engineers to your list of person, you know, which is your list of users. So you don't want that. So that's why it doesn't work. But as you saw, there's just a specific situation where this breaks. It only works, it only breaks um, if I start to, if I want to um, put something in there that's of the wrong type. And that means in some way, sometimes it works. And if we look at the wildcards thing here, we will see that we only ever get content. Right? We only ever get content. We never set content to it. So that means we can actually expect, accept anything that's at most a number. So really what I want to say is, whatever type we have here, this thing basically, we can do basically want to have, maybe we could put it here, t extends number. And now this works. So we can say, whatever t you give me, as long as it extends number, I'm fine, because I always only um, get stuff. But we don't have to make it, um, we don't have to do it like this. We can do actually something that is simpler and more flexible. We can say here, whatever extends number. Uh, and then here, for each node of, and there's a saying for this and the, it's called uh, so there's a shortcut for that which is called PEX and PEX means producer extends consumer super what that means is if you have an instance that you want to use a oh sorry by the way this is called the white card the question mark there. So if you want to, if you have a type, uh, sorry, if you have a variable, and you only use it to produce a value, right? It only, it's only there to give you something. So it's just, it's a producer, right? You only call get content. You only, also only get stuff. So maybe we could actually rec <laughs> nice. In Java eight terms, we don't call this a producer anymore, right? Uh, we call it a supplier. So it's called supplier extends consumer super, which uh, is sex. So that's nice too. Um, so there's that. Because it only ever provides you or supplies you with a value, it can. It doesn't matter what exact value it is, what exact type it is, as long as it knows the number. Yeah, it's easy to remember, right? Much better than packs. Sex, much better. Okay. So that's nice. Now, this works the other way around as well. So in this case, I'm going to capital, write this in all caps, producer extends, well, this one probably as well. Pick the one you like better. Um, I'm fine with both. But we're in the first case, we're in the extends case. Let's put this down here, where we say uh, consumer super because, well, it's quite, at least more, it applies here better. Because it's the other way around. Here, the node only ever gets a content set, right? So you set um, a content in this case. You might think that you can do this here as well. At least that's what I just thought. I just thought you could just say, um, so, oh yeah, what does set depths do? Um, you give it, you give it a note here. You give it a note, and then you give it the depth, and it just sets that as a content. Uh, it sets the depth as a content. So, an, so an integer note on the level zero had zero, and then on, on depth one had all the ones, and on depth two had all twos. So that's what this does. And you could think the same thing, right? Yeah. So everything, as long as it's least it's, it's an integer, I can set that. And that's what I thought just now as well. But that would be wrong because what this means is. Um, you're actually saying, I don't know what kind this node is. This is a node of whatever I don't know. It's just something that extends integer. And if it's just something that extends integer, then you cannot set an integer to it because it could be, well, integer doesn't have subtypes, right? But if it had, 
it could be a subtype that won't work. It's like same thing with number again. If you have a node of whatever extends number, then you cannot set every number to it. No, it has to be the other way around. If you want to set a content, you have to say whatever, I want to set an integer to you, right? So this is the thing we want to do here. We know we want to set an integer. So we have to say, we don't care what type, what generic types you have here, but it has to be at least integer or higher. So it's the other way around, it's super. So the generic type of node can be whatever, but it must be a top of integer in the hierarchy. So it could, for example, be a node of object. That makes sense. You can set an integer on object, but it cannot be a node of string because you, well, you can set an integer on a node of string. That would make sense. And here we find out that this question mark and this question mark are actually different things. Because if I get the content from the child, we're saying like it's whatever, but it's, it's anything, right? It's anything and it's at most a number. And a root, it's also anything that's at most a number, but these are not the same anythings because they don't have a name. So that's why this is a compiler error, because this and this are not the th same. But the fact of the matter is, I can set, I can never set any content to root now. Not, I can set nothing here, well, I can probably set now. But that's pretty much the only thing. I can never set a concrete type here, because I got, I said here, root is whatever extends number. And I don't know what it is. So I can put, I can add nothing here because I don't know what it would be that extends the number. Now is the only valid value here. It's weird with wildcards. So if you just use generics in the sense of you just use API that they have generics in them, you don't probably don't have to care that much about wildcards um, because you never have to write them out yourselves. What you, when you have to know wildcards is when you write a generic API, but then they do become important because an API can quickly become quite useless if you don't think about them. And this was a great example. If sum of subtree, I was like, oh, well, let me be very generic. I, you know, I can take whatever, it's a number. That's pretty great. Um, but the effect of that would have been that everyone who ever writes a note, oh, sorry, everyone who ever wants to call this with a note of integer or a note of double or a note of float it would never work because that well, that's not a node of number. So if you write a generic API, then it becomes really important that you have to, that you consider wildcards. And basically, every time you put a generic into a method signature, meaning into a return type or into a parameter type, every time you should technically think about, can I accept something that extends this? Can I accept something that is a super type of this? Or neither. Well, if it's neither, then you have to put the specific type. If it's both, then it's really just whatever. And if it's just one of the two, which is the most common case, you have to pick the right one. And that was it for generic wildcards in Java. I hope I could clear up some of the confusion surrounding that topic and help you use this important feature in practice. If you have any questions, leave them below or stop by the live streams. If you want to see more tutorials in this style, let me know with a thumbs up. Next video will be on recursive generics, a fun way to throw your understanding of generics into the wood chipper and see how much of it survives. See you then. So long.